So today uh, we're going to be joined by an excellent moderator, Rebecca Sanders from Arizona Republic, AZ Central, is going to be leading us through our forum. But to set up our conversation about Proposition 206 on the minimum wage and paid time off, I'd like to start by showing you a short video that I'm very proud of our students. Uh, one of the projects that the Pastor Center has undertaken is to work with a class, a uh, Master's of Fine Arts class, and we gave them a challenge. Um, in teams, they were challenged to come up with short three-minute videos to explain some of the down-ballot issues that don't get as much media attention in a way that would engage people that might not be into politics um, in a way that would be fun, but help people start to think about the key issues at stake in each of these um, election decisions. So uh, last, last week's forum on marijuana, we showed a three-minute video that used toy dinosaurs to explain the arguments for and against um, the Proposition 205. And I'm proud to now show you a short video that another of this, these uh, team of these students did to, um, in a fun way, get people thinking about what are the arguments for and against minimum wage. Imagining this town without any corporate competition. Okay. Pretty soon I'll be at the helm of the single largest business in all of Tempe. Yes, dear. Pretty soon we won't need your income. We can both live off of mine. If Proposition 206 passes, if the minimum wage is increased, I'm finished. Manuel? Jose? Philip? Unemployed! Did that work its way into your little fantasy, dear? Then they'll find other jobs, and those jobs will pay them more! A yes vote supports this measure to raise the minimum wage to $10 in 2017, and then incrementally to $12 by 2020. It's a right to paid sick time off from employment. Darling. I love you and your ridiculous logic. Any employer who violates record-keeping, posting, or other requirements that the Commission may establish under this article is subject to a civil penalty of at least $250 for a first violation. First violation. First violation. First violation! First violation. Oh. Voting no on Proposition 206 is a violation. Preventing your employees from living a better life is a violation. Don't you understand that, Joe? You'll keep your employees longer and they'll work harder for you. It's not that simple. If I have to raise their wages, a yes vote on Proposition 206 would mean I wouldn't have a business. It's not just me. Every small business in this town will suffer at all for a couple bucks an hour. A couple of bucks an hour is a lot to some people, pendejo. How would you like it if you had to choose between feeding your family and paying rent? Family, regardless of age, a biological, adopted or foster child, stepchild or legal ward, a child of a domestic partner, a child to whom the employee stands. And loco parentis. Loco parentis. What do you know about standing in loco parentis? You know nothing about standing in loco parentis! <laughs> <laughs> Here is the basics. A yes vote shall have the effect of increasing the minimum wage from $8.05 per hour in 2016 to $10 per hour in 2017, and then incrementally increasing the minimum wage to $12 per hour by the year 2020. It entitles employees to earn one hour of paid sick time for every 30 hours worked, with limits based upon the size of the employer. So small employers generally would be a minimum of three days per year and larger employers five days per year. Broadly it broadly defines the conditions under which paid sick time may be taken. So it's not just the flu, but it could also be a mental or physical illness, care of a family member, 
a public health emergency or absence due to domestic violence, sexual violence, abuse, or stalking. It prohibits various forms of retaliation against employees for exercising any rights under the law um, and requires employers to provide various notices to employees about the law. A no vote shall have the effect of retaining the existing minimum wage along with the existing method for annually increasing the minimum wage for inflation and retaining employers existing ability to ter determine their own paid sick leave policy. Can you explain your, motiv your personal motivation for advocating for your side, uh, what you have seen that forms your view on the issue? And let's start with you, Mr. Taylor. I, like many of you, got a job as a teenager. Uh, I got a job at uh, PV Mall at the movie theater there. I don't even know if it's there anymore. And my job was to tear tickets uh, as people made their way into the auditorium. Uh, I made $4.25 an hour. That was the minimum wage at the time. Uh, I was probably overpaid to, to do that. I was tearing bits of cardstock and sending people to the theater that was playing T2 or whatever was the hot movie that summer. Um, what did I bring to that job? Not much. I was in high school. My previous job before that, I was a paper boy for the Phoenix Gazette. For you longtime Phoenicians, we used to have another paper here. Um, so I did not get that job uh, to get rich or to support a family, and uh, Tomas will talk about the, uh, those individuals who do have to support a family. For me, though, this was the first rung on the career ladder. I learned some soft skills. Learned about showing up on time, looking halfway presentable, a little bit of customer service. These first job opportunities are incredibly important. That sets us up, that's the, that's the launch pad for us. Uh, no, I am no longer in the uh, movie exhibition business, but uh, I hope that that first job uh, played a role in my ability to get another job and another job and so on and so on. My concern is that if Proposition 206 passes, that those entry-level opportunities will become fewer uh, in likelihood for, for young people. And it will actually make uh, things harder for the individuals that the proponents claim to want to help. And Mr. Robles, can you talk about what life experiences led you to your opinion on this issue? And just echo Garrick's sentiments about the appreciation of all of you showing up so early to hear us speak about a, a really important issue that's going to affect uh, close to a million workers. Close to a million workers, almost a third of the workforce here in Arizona. Um, and this issue is deeply personal to me. Uh, I was born in, in Tucson and raised in rural Arizona, in Sierra Vista, Arizona, and my dad was a construction worker. Uh, one day, he fell from a roof, landed on his back, and for the next few days could not walk. The lack of worker protections for my dad cost him his job and cost us the, the knowledge of knowing where your next meal is coming from. When we moved to Phoenix, there were more opportunities, but it cost more to live. My mother took a job to help support the family. She worked at Hazelwood Factory. It was a t-shirt factory on 24th Street in Van Buren uh, back in the day. And she would sew with sleeves the t-shirts. And uh, I remember there were times where I would go with her and help her grab the stack of shirts and put them on the table and she took sleeves and sewed them on uh, from a machine. They worked so hard, uh, 80 hours a week sometimes. And we still sometimes had to worry about where, where a meal was coming from. And uh, there was a period uh, where all, I, all we had to eat was one plate of, uh, of beans. So I always have a joke, it's like, if you ever offer me just beans at a dinner, I'm gonna be pretty upset. <laughs> um, but the last three years we've organized and we've spoken to families, and we've spoken to small business owners. And the message has been very similar. I work so hard to provide for my family. And I work full time, and sometimes I work two jobs. And sometimes I have to decide whether I can pay the rent, or I can pay the light bill, or if I can buy food, or provide clothing for my children. Or God forbid my son gets sick, 
and I have to take time off work because I'm not sure if my job will let me back. And so this initiative is meant to help those people, meant to help over a million people here that this initiative will uh, help change the lives of them. And it will ensure that our folks can save to either improve their skills or better their lives. Or we're never gonna have to choose between the, a sick child or their own illness or health over a job. And so this is a beautiful measure, one that's community driven, community focused, one that has been organized from these workers, and I'm very proud to be a representative of them. Look, the choice before you is pretty stark. Uh, it's yes uh, for a mandated uptick in wages, or it's uh, or it's no to preserve a minimum wage in Arizona that's already uh, above the federal minimum wage and is pegged to inflation. Uh, as I've said before, uh, the choices before employers when they are faced with a mandated uh, wage increase, they're not good, and they result in fewer opportunities rather than more. It's going to lead to uh, more automation. It's going to lead to uh, fewer opportunities at the entry level or higher prices. It's lost on me how making life more expensive helps those on the bottom rung of the wage and the career ladder. But uh, that ultimately is what will result. It's not scare tactics, it's not fear mongering, it's just math. The, uh, these are the choices that will be in front of employers. And uh, to uh, Tomas's charge that uh, we have advocated on behalf of businesses at the state capitol, guilty as charged. We are an advocacy organization on behalf of job creators. It's by creating jobs that leads to uh, greater upward mobility in the state. My biggest, uh, I think, disappointment when, when we do these debates is the threats and the fear tactics that the chamber likes to use uh, as an argument against this minimum wage increase and earn sick time. Instead of coming to the table together and working together, um, we're, we're told that we're going to ruin things. We're, the chamber does nothing to, to actually be proactive. They've never championed earned uh, earn tax credit. They've never championed to have more money in the, in the pockets of workers, but they've sure championed a lot of tax cuts for businesses in, over the years to the tune of triple digit millions of dollars. Uh, this initiative will help families. 88% of them are adults, 28 years and older. Well, more, the majority of them are women's, are mothers, are, uh, are grandmothers. This initiative will put money in the hands of the pockets of our workers and will allow them to never have to decide whether between their job and their, and their health or their children's health. In addition, domestic violence victims will be able to use these days to get away from their abusers. This initiative is community driven, is community led, and truly seeks to help out the people that really matter in our community, which is our workers and our small businesses. And 300 small businesses agree.